What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session, with today's showcase looking at a very powerful stack lock build that will provide you with some hefty damage resistance that can be compared to having a well of radiance on at all times. With the recent update, a number of exotics have received buffs to pull them in line with the recent state of the game. One of these buffs went directly to the stack exotic, which is perk is already quite powerful when built into correctly, but easily overshadowed by others. Now, the exotic has become one of the most relied upon warlock exotics for anyone or anything you decide to use it in. At the current moment though, it's seen a high increase via trials for its new updated perk. Its perk now, alongside the additional well energy you get, now provides a damage resistance upon activating it, and with how the exotic is designed around well regeneration as its core property, you can bet this can be used and abused. That's now where I come in with today's build. We're going to use the newly updated stack with Stasis to create a near unkillable warlock who can provide constant buffs to us and our allies while also being able to soak up damage and dish it right back out again. I think of it like a beefed up version of Mike Tyson in a dress. No matter how many hits you get thrown at you, you're still going to come out on top. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I'd really appreciate a like and a sub as it does go a long way for me. The subclass being used is Shade Binder, so we can utilize the stasis effects, but primarily the Whispers of Change fragments. With the stack buff, every time you use a rift, you and your team members will get a 25% damage reduction in PvE, while PvP you get a 15% reduction. Not only that, but you can also get your rift back up very quickly if you reach critical health and activate the Dearly Departed perk, which with a 100% recovery stat, means you could get your rift back up and running within at least 10 seconds. Both of these combined allows you to take on the role of a titan and absorb damage thrown at you while making you stronger in the process, which is scary when combined with a tumor of elements or a tumor of hunger. With stasis on the other hand, it allows us to play around a bit more in terms of what type of playstyle you want to play. As you can see, my aspects and fragments are focused around grenade regeneration and spamming stasis turrets to slow down everything in my path. And this is a very nice and simple build that anyone can create if you don't have Variety's Brow or Eye of Another World equipped it. What makes this setup special though is how we can enhance the damage reduction on our end even more and customize the setup for more damage, abilities, etc. as much as we like. The fragment Whispers of Chain provides a 25% damage reduction when near glaciers or frozen combatants, which also stacks with the stack's abilities for a 50% damage reduction in PvE. This is very nuts when you think about how you can also add in Whispers of Rhyme for an extra overshield or Whispers of Rending for increased kinetic damage against frozen targets, etc. The combinations available via the fragments are endless and this is where you should be looking first when building into the exotic as a whole. Although I've opted for Whispers of Torment, Whispers of Shards, Whispers of Fissures and Whispers of Chains instead, this still holds a lot of weight for carrying me and my team through endgame. As long as I produce grenade energy and let my turrets do the work, I'll be getting a constant damage reduction from start to finish, which matters a lot in the tough content. For weapons, you're going to need to have a weapon with a headstone perk to make the build work. This is simple as you can farm the seasonal hand cannon via the recaster to get one, but without the perk you're not going to get the same usage rate as to how I'm currently using it. The primary you're going to be aiming for, which is the easiest to attain the perk, is called the Volp Cooler, with my Volp attaining Headstone, Tunnel Vision and Tactical Mag. It doesn't matter what you get for the rest of the perks and the weapon, just ideally getting the Headstone perk is what you need to aim for. This new perk allows users to create miniature glaciers upon precision kills, which can vary in size depending on the type of combatant you face. As a stasis weapon, this works wonders when combined with the stasis subclass as you begin all sorts of synergy coming out of the creation of glaciers. Through basic gameplay, we can utilize the glaciers to gain some ability energy back upon destroying them as long as we have the following fragments available. When you start to think more for end game though, we can use the glaciers to not only receive buffs but also use them as extra protection when out in open areas. This for example in the build is going to allow my Whispers of Change fragment to give me an extra damage reduction but also extra protection that I can use to stay behind undercover. After I've cleared an area I can then destroy them and activate my Whispers of Shards, the games and grenade energy back and vice versa. Overall, a wonderful perk on a really wonderful weapon. For a secondary I'm using the Cartesian Coordinates Fusion Rifle with Under Pressure and Vorpal, 
and ideally we are going to be using this weapon alongside the particle deconstruction mod to weaken and enhance damage further on our ends. The following fusion is one of the best to pick and use with a small and easy to grind for perk pool. Whether PvP or PvE, this weapon can do a lot of work depending on the role you achieve, but not only that, as it's a rapid fire frame, it makes the weapon a perfect end game mini boss to boss slayer weapon on its own. With this weapon and stasis, our damage will always be on top, and against Roman mini bosses who require the deepest focus, this weapon will make short work of them. Alternatively, Hollow Words, Tekken Force, and Trinity System are great and easy to farm alternatives. For Heavy, I've chosen to use the Corrective Measure Machine Gun with Fiend and Frenzy and Firefly. Ideally, the plan for the weapon is to use it when up against mini bosses to bosses in game, or when I manage to freeze a number of combatants and then use it to cause a large chain reaction. I do have a weak regret linear fusion, which is a stasis based weapon, but sadly I don't have a version with a headstone just of yet, as if I did, I would fit it directly into the build. As a heavy, we won't have that much of a profound effect on the entirety of the build, so you have free reign to pick whatever suits you best. For the stats, our two main focus of the build is make sure we have enough recovery available to get our wrists back quickly, and then make sure we have enough grenade energy available to get our turrets and grenades back quickly as well. These of course are easily covered through the mods and subclasses used, but also because we now have a stasis weapon available, we can use certain mods to get elemental walls back faster than ever before, something I found to be very useful in improving the strength of the build. Now do remember a lot of these stat points and mods used aren't entirely needed as we can circumvent any loss with another mod with near or identical function. A good example of this is the recovery stat at 70. As we have this stack helmet, we don't need to reach 100, for example, to see any noticeable changes in our abilities. The stagger's perk, Dearly Departed, allows users to get rift energy back every time we hit critical health, and there's a good chunk you do get back for taking damage. Easily, we could use our grenades or the headstone perk to reduce damage for us and then let the combatants damage us to get a quick burst of rift energy back and repeat as many times as you like. This easy but also slightly risky method frees up Nii into spec into recovery just to get enough with energy back in the get go, and in theory, 50 to 70 is the sweet spot you'll want to aim for anyways. For your grenades, you're gonna have a lot going for you, so having 70 in the stat is a good cooldown rate to start with. Except for the standard discipline mods and the fragments Whispers of Torment and Shards, we have other mods such as Elemental Armaments that will allow my primary weapon to produce elemental well and kills which is very handy as we can gain a bit of doing so, but we can also trigger off Font of Might for a 25% weapon buff to sustain max DPS. Now combine that mod with your Fusion and you're going to be doing some pretty nasty damage alongside. We also have a new mod called Grenade Kickstart which is only available in the stated elemental items and is very similar to the Firepower mod, although less restrictive and easier to activate. For the rest of the stats and mods, we do have some key areas that can be improved on further if you wished. Intellect can be pushed up a lot more higher, so we do have the room available to go ahead and slot in some extra mods for this key area. So while 50 base stat, we can also chuck in the hands on mod to further decrease the cooldown rate and also use frontal wisdom for further support. Hands on will also link into our melee, which is at 60 base stat, and that should be enough as we can rely on the elemental worlds to fill in the rest unless you have other plans in mind. Now as we cover the rest of the stuff there, here's a more precise breakdown of what type of mods being used to carry the rest of the build. For head, we have minor intellect, hands-on and front of might mod. Arm, we have grenade kickstart and unstoppable fusion rifle mod. In chest, we have discipline, cacusa damper times two and elemental armaments mod. Leg, we have discipline, fusion scavenger and front of wisdom mod. Bond, we have discipline, and particle deconstruction mod. I have to give it to Bungie when designing and updating perks in game, they really know how to make something so simple easily become the most powerful item in game. The update to the stack has become one of the best updates to be introduced when improving all the exotics, as now not only is the exotic even more useful in PvE, but it's also found its footing in end game PvP such as Trials, something that not a lot of players would have genuinely expected. And the new headstone perk allows users to fully customize a stasis subclass even more without needing to rely on a exotic weapon to fill in the niche area. All of this in total provides a wonderful setup for future content in mind, so how does the current build stack when being used? As I mentioned before, the build will offer users a higher damage reduction, 
high base regeneration and constant damage buffs that is strong enough for you to take into the highest level of nightfalls or whatever endgame content you have in mind. Your elemental wells will be proccing each time we collect the well, which will then provide us a increased damage buff and super regeneration cooldown, while also providing us with enough energy back to use some of our abilities. Creating glaciers via our priming weapon or grenades on their own will yield you more ability energy back to the point that you can spam your stasis to us more than once. And then finally, of course, we can place a debuff on targets via the power called Deconstruction Perk and use and abuse the static exotic for non stop healing damage reduction and class ability regen. This build does everything you need for whatever content you decide to take it in, which is great as there is still room for improvements. The thing about this build is that we can change the fragments and aspects to fit a certain playstyle and still yield the benefits from doing so. We can go for a more aggressive playstyle designed for constant damage buffs and damage reduction, or we can focus on a version that is more supportive in design rather than defensive, the list goes on. Thanks to the buff for the stat and the new additional perks, we can pretty much go anywhere with a build. Well, perhaps one issue you'll have with the build is going into any content with champions involved, since you can only pair a one anti-champion mod to use unless you are happy to sacrifice your primary weapon. Some contents you may be able to get away with this and brute force your way in or rely on a teammate to cover you, but the higher you go, the less likely you're going to be able to pull this off. Whatever you decide to do is down to you as the build can be designed to take into consideration any further changes that appear. Now anyways, that's the end of the build, so I now recommend that you go out and become the almighty rock like you were designed to be, or something inspirational like that, I, I don't really know at this point. Now if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by, I'll see you all in the next one.